This is the second in a series of videos designed to teach the basics of CSS. If you are new to CSS and have not yet watched the first video in this series, then you might want to go back and watch that video before watching this one. This video will talk more about selectors. The selector is used to select the elements that will receive the style. Let's take a look at some of the many ways that selectors can be specified. Go to littlewebhut.com and click on the CSS tab. On the left side of the page is a link called selectors, so click on that. Here we can see a diagram that shows the structure of a CSS declaration. In this example, both the margin and the text align property here will be applied to the div element. The div element here is the selector. In this case, the selector just simply uses the name of the element that the property should be applied to. But there are many ways that a selector can be specified. And this method, by the way, is called the type selector. And we can see it right here. If we click on this link, we can get more information about the type selector. As you can see here, you can specify just a single element name, like we did here, the H3 element, or you can specify multiple element names by separating them with a comma. What this says here is that this text align property will be set to center for the P, the H1, and the H2 elements. I can press the test button here if I want to try this out. Here's my styles up here in the style section. And here are the H1, H2, H3, and P elements. So when I press the view button, I can see that the H1 text, the H2 text, and the P text are all aligned to the center, just like this style right here specified. And then I can also see that the H3 text here is aligned to the left side just like this style here specified. Let's go look at another selector type now. I'm going to go back to our previous page and click on the selectors link again. And this time I'm going to look at the universal selector. So I'll click on that link right here. The universal selector uses an asterisk and is used to select all elements. We can see an example if we press the test button here. Since the asterisk here matches all elements, this says that the color property is going to be set to red for all elements. And here we have an H1 element and we have a P element. So when I press the view button, we notice that both the H1 text and the P text are both red. Now let's go look at the class selector. So as before, we'll go back to our previous page and click on the selectors link. And then here's the link for the class selector. So I'll click on that. This selector specifies a class name, which in this case is TST1. Whenever you use a class name, you must precede it with a period as shown here. This style will be applied to all elements that have a matching class attribute name. Here the H1 element has a class attribute set to TST1, and this P element also has a class attribute set to TST1. So since both of these elements have a class attribute that matches the TST1 up here for the style, that means that this text property will be set to center for both the H1 and the P elements. Let's press the test button to try it out. When I press the view button here, we can see that the text for the H1 tag and the text for the P tag are centered. If I go up here to the P tag now and I change the class name to TST2, when I press the view button, we'll see that the text for the P tag is no longer centered. And this is because 
the style specified that the class name needed to be TST1. So now it only matches the H1 element here. Now let's go back to our previous page. I can also combine the type selector, which we looked at earlier, with the class selector. You can see an example here. You can see here that we have a class name, TST1, specified, just like we did before. And it's preceded by a period, because remember, a class name always needs to be preceded by a period. And preceding the period here is an element name, which in this case is H1. What this style says is that we want to apply the text align property and set it to center for all H1 elements that also have a class name of TST1. Let's click on our test button here now. Here is our style declaration and down here we have three elements. The first element is an H1 element and the class attribute is set to TST1. So this style attribute here will apply to this element. This H1 element here does not have the class attribute set. So this style here will not apply to this H1 element here. This P element here has a class attribute set to TST1, but since it's not an H1 element, this style also will not apply to the P element. When I press the View button, we can see that the style was only applied to the first element, which was both an H1 element and had a class attribute value of TST1. Let's take a quick look at one more selector type. Once again, we'll go back to our previous page and we'll click on the Selectors link. And then down here is the ID selectors link, and so I'll click on that. This selector specifies an ID name, which in this case is TST1. Whenever you use an ID name, you must precede the name with a number sign, like is shown here. This style will be applied to the element that has a matching ID attribute name. So for example, this H1 element right here has its ID attribute set to TST1. So this is the element that this style will be applied to. Well, as you can see, if we go back to the selectors page, there are quite a number of different selector types that can be applied. We covered some of the more common types, but I would encourage you to spend some time and look at these other types on your own. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.